we're going to continue dividing with radicals in our the first part of the lesson we only divided by radicals it was just a single radical in the denominator we're going to end up having some binomials in the denominator now and so we're going to do a quick review of multiplying which we did mention this uh, in the multiplying or the, the products with radicals we mentioned this rule which is going to be helpful 2 plus root 3 and 2 minus root 3 these are called conjugates of each other they have the same terms but opposite signs and a nice thing about the products of this uh, when you multiply these two we remember this is in the form of a plus b times a minus b and when you multiply these you simply get the first thing squared minus the second thing squared so what's very helpful about this is we're going to be squaring things and so when we multiply um, a binomial that has a square root in it by its conjugate we won't end up having radicals anymore once uh, after we multiply by them so this would simply be 2 squared minus the square root of 3 squared which is 4 minus 3 which is just 1 and so we had things that did have radicals in them when we multiplied them together it's now a rational number no more irrational numbers and so we're going to use this concept to help us simplify radicals shortly. First, we're just going to do a um, quick, some quick examples with conjugates. And this is what I mentioned before. We'll multiply by the radical or by the conjugate to get rid of radicals when there's more than one term in the denominator. So right here we have. 3 over 2 plus root 3 and so this is using the one we did just worked with so we have a root 3 in the denominator we can't just multiply by root 3 over root 3 because when you distribute that you'll still have a root 3 in the denominator so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the conjugate of what's in the denominator which is 2 minus root 3 and so what we do to the bottom we have to do to the top we're just really multiplying by a form of 1 here and so then we do our multiplication. Two times, or three times two is six. Three times uh, negative root three is negative three root three. And the bottom, we actually worked this out before, but we can show the work here. So we had our six minus three root three. Multiplying, we have four minus two root three plus two root three plus or minus 3. We notice that these are opposites of each other so that's 0 and then 4 minus 3 is 1 so this whole denominator is really just a 1 and we don't have to put a 1 in the denominator so our answer is 6 minus 3 root 3. So conjugates are important so make sure we understand conjugates. What is the conjugate of 5 plus root 7? Well that is simply 5 minus root 7. And if you were to multiply these, uh, you would get a number that no longer has an irrational number in it. Another one, negative 3 plus root 2. Realize we're just changing the sign of, uh, or the middle sign here. So this is going to be negative 3 minus root 2 is the conjugate of that. And this, the conjugate of 4 minus root 6 is going to be 4 plus root 6. So know your conjugates well. So here, we want to simplify this. We can't have a radical in the denominator. So what we are going to do, uh, and we can't just multiply by square root of 6, because that's not going to get rid of radicals. So we need to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. So the conjugate of this is 3 minus root 6. What we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And so we'll do our multiplying. We get 21 minus 7 root 6. We can multiply this out if we need to, but we can also remember that when we have a plus b times a minus b, it's going to be the first thing squared minus the second thing squared. And so that is 21 minus 7 root 6 over, here we have a 9 minus a 6, 
So 9 minus 6 is 3. We do want to check, can we simplify anything here? In order to simplify, we would need a common factor in each term. So here's a 3 goes into this, a 3 goes into 21, but a 3 does not go into the 7. So that's simplified as much as it can be. Our next one here, what are we going to multiply by? Well, we need to multiply by 3 minus root 6 over 3 minus root 6. And this is the one we just did, so we don't need to look through this again. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. We want to work through this one. So we are going to multiply both top and bottom by not square root. We're going to multiply by 5 minus the square root of 2. 5 minus the square root of 2. In the numerator, we have a 6. Wow. We have 30 minus 6 root 2. In the denominator, again, remember when we have conjugates, we're going to have the first thing squared, which is 25 minus root 2 squared, which is just 2. So we get 30 minus 6 root 2 over, we know this is just equal to 2, so over 23. No more simplifying can be done here, so this is our answer. And we'll do one more here. We don't have to worry about this. Uh, it's this that we're, we're trying to get rid of because we don't want a square root in the denominator, so we're going to multiply by the conjugate. conjugate. It's just that we're going to have more terms here, so we want 2 minus root 7. Conjugate of the denominator. Here we multiply this out. This is going to be 2 minus root 7 plus 2 root 3. And square root of 3 times square root of 7 is 21, or negative square root of 21. In the denominator, it's the 2 squared, which is 4, minus the root 7 squared, which is 7. And we can subtract that. Uh, 4 minus 7 is negative 3. The numerator, there's no like terms, so that's going to just stay as is with those four separate terms. So we can simplify things that have binomials in the denominator. The last thing we're going to look at are problems. Now these, we don't want radicals in the denominator, but this is not a square root. And so I'm going to, I know we have this bubble here, which we can undo here in a minute. Our first guess might just be to multiply by the cubed root of 5 sorry, cubed root of 5 over the cubed root of 5, because that's what we've been doing, uh, or what we did earlier to get rid of these. Well, this is going to be 2 times the cubed root of 5 over the cubed root of 5 times 5, which is 25. Well, we still have a radical in the denominator. This is not simplified. This is not a square root. It's a cubed root. So we can't just do the same thing we've always done. Uh, it's the same idea, but in order to get rid of this radical, we want the cubed root of a perfect cube down here. The way to do that, so let's get rid of this, because that's not the right way to do that, is to multiply by the cubed root of 5 squared over the cubed root of 5 squared. Now this will work out better. This will simplify our perfect cube. So we have in the numerator 2 cubed root of 25. In the denominator, when we multiply these radicals, we have the cubed root of 5 to the first times 5 squared, which is 5 cubed. But we know by now that the cubed root of 5 cubed is simply 5. And so we have 2 times the cube root of 25 over 5. 
And so having a different root in the denominator, think through it, make sure you get, uh, in this case, we needed a perfect cube. And our last example here, this has a fourth root. And so that's even a little more different. So I'm going to multiply by the fourth root of something. And what I do to the bottom, I need to do to the top. Well, what do I need here so I have a something to the fourth power inside that fourth root? Well, I have 6 to the first here. I want a 6 to the fourth because those will simplify and I'll no longer have a radical in the denominator. So what I need is a 6 cubed. 6 cubed. And so multiplying across here, we get 2 times the fourth root of 6 cubed. Well, 6 cubed is 216 if you multiply that out. 6 times 6 times 6. And then in our denominator, we are just going to have a 6. But we can even do some more simplifying because we have a 2 and a 6. 2 goes into this once, 2 goes into this three times. So our answer for this is the fourth root of 216 over 3. And so that's some more simplifying radicals. It gets a little harder, but we used conjugates, and then we did ones that had higher roots in the denominator.